All right, welcome to the February 6th, 2024 Aries Cloud Asian Python user group meeting. Lots on the agenda. Again, we've got a pile of things in progress, one or two of which will probably come off the list this week. So that's good um, as they will we'll complete. Um, but we'll go over those, talk about Akapai 1.0, um, hopefully cover um, the state of Akapai plugins. And um, there's at least one or two PRs that we want to go over as part of this. So that's the agenda. Um, reminder, this is a Linux Foundation Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, which is on the screen, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Um, welcome all to, the, um, to this meeting. Glad to have you here. If there's anyone that's new and wants to introduce themselves, please do so. And if there's anyone that wants to make any announcements or request changes to the agenda, additions, please do so. Jump up to the mic. Okay. Um, the ARIES annual report, the PR for that is posted here. Um, I'll post it again in the chat. Um, that will be discussed soon. Um, I'm not sure which day it will be discussed, um, whether it will be this week or next, um, but it's likely to be at an hour before this on Thursdays, um, either um, this, this coming Thursday or the following most likely. So we'll see what happens. Second reminder is the um, decentralized identity interoperability uh, webinar this Thursday at this time. So um, 48 hours from now will be uh, the webinar. There's a link here that you can um, register for the um for the webinar and um highly recommend it i think it's going to have lots of interesting topics to go over so um i put in the register uh, registration link in the chat as well um did want to mention this as of yesterday the hyperledger mentorship program is accepting proposals um we had really good results last year and um the, uh, the the in in going with the mentorship program in hyperledger and non creds. Um, Michael Otter and I mentored a student who did an excellent job at adding in all of the cryptography um, text um, into the non cred spec, which included you know going through it, executing it from the implementation, understanding it. And um, and then putting it in, he in fact uh, Aritra was um, the mentee, and um, at one point um, came to Mike and I and said, "I think I've discovered a flaw in in OnCreds." And it was actually a flaw that had been mentioned and, and rectified in um, recently, but he had actually gone through the paper enough to find and and. And document what he thought was a pretty subtle thought, uh, flaw. So really successful for us. Um, it it does take time, and and you do have to have an idea of what you want to accomplish. But um, the time wasn't that bad. Basically, um, our reacher really did a good job at, at figuring it out. We would meet every second week, and then had a a fairly active um, Discord channel. So. Um, highly recommended if if um, an organization has has the bandwidth, both because you get, um, you know, you're you're helping somebody and and moving uh, and providing mentorship, but also great results out of it. So um, and and you get some some really um, good interactions with it. So can't recommend it enough. Um, so with that, we'll move on to the agenda. Status updates. Um, don't see Jamie on the call. Ian, do you want to give a brief update on where Jamie's been on the um, 
on the and on Fred's RS work. Um, yeah, so the let's see the schema. Um, and so the endor we're working on the endorser stuff right now. So the, the uh, endorser functionality is being updated for the schema. Um, Jamie's been working on that. Daniel's been mainly doing the the reviews on that one, and um, the cred def and the rest of it is in progress right now for the endorser functionality. Okay. Um, an OnCreds in W3C format, um, on the Monday meeting of an OnCreds, we got a demo from Credo, um, if the team from Animo that's working on, um, the Credo update and it, they had a full demo end to end of the, um, an OnCreds in W3C format being, um, requ uh, issued, held, presentation request coming in via um, diff presentation exchange and then a presentation being presented. So really good stuff. Um, also gives gives the uh, folks on the W uh, on the Akapai side the ability to, to use that um, for interoperability. Uh, Ian, you want to again mention how they're doing as far as um, the what's cooking folks are doing for the implementation in Akapai? Uh, yeah, it's going really well. Uh, so we had a status meeting yesterday. Um, they opened a PR yesterday, actually, which I haven't had a chance to take a look at yet. But um, it looks like stuff is in, is in progress, and they're well on track to finish by the end of March. So, Excellent. OK. Patrick. So the you just mentioned the contract finished by the end of March. So are, are we expecting more changes to like the core Anoncres RS uh, fundamental of this Anoncres and W3C or that part is pretty much done and all we're doing now is integrating into the respective frameworks? So that part has been done. There's been um, tweaks done. So for example, we had three different crypto suite um, flags um, identifiers being used, we're down to one, and um, detection of that. Um, so that was completed last week. Um, I think there's a PR in this week that Timo did, um, if I remember correctly. So there's there's um, little things happening, but. Um, Hang on, whoops, that didn't work. I just wanted to check that PR that he's got in. Oh no, it's already been merged, so it was merged yesterday. Um, so those are the only one. Oh no, this is the refactor. Okay, maybe he closed his PR, I don't know. No, it would have shown up as closed. Anyway, um, the last one was, um, oh no, sorry, this is it. Only one issue, issuer ID for legacy. So a slight refactor here done um, uh, to to enable the W3C format, uh, you know, the finalization of it. Um, so basically, as as the uh, Animo team did their work, they found a couple of things they wanted cleaned up. But other than that, we're done um, from a from a an on creds RS perspective. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll put the, um, when I get a chance, I'll go find the link to this, um, YouTube video. It's, uh, it, there's a, but a six or seven minute, uh, demo of, of the exchange of the credentials and everything aligned with the, um, the test suite, the test vector that Animo had put together. So that's good. Uh, Update on the DIDPeer and AFJ interop. I know we've got AATH tests. There's been some tweaking. Um, it caused a little bit of disruption in the AATH normal flow. I'm doing some final tests of some corrections that um, Sheldon's made. 
And so we should have um, a series of did peer tests in AATH. Um, Daniel, any further updates you want to give on this? Um, let's see. So I've got a PR open. Uh, it's been open for a little while now, a, a little more than a week, uh, with fixes necessary to get AFJ slash Credo and, and Akpai talking over out of band and did exchange using did peer four. Um, so that's working. Um, th there's some follow-up I need to do on that PR to get some test passing. And I, I did stuff that was a little bit more destructive than I intended in, in terms of backwards yeah, compatibility yeah. support. Um, so I need to fix that up. Um, but yeah, uh, it's really close. I've just been distracted with a few other things. So yeah. I haven't gotten that. That's this just one. Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> and the one thing I didn't understand, was there credo changes, um, being made or, or not? Um, so that PR, what I did is I, I did make a PR to credo to update their implementation to support multi-key as a verification method type. Um, okay. but the, the PR as it stands does not require any changes to credo. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, a, a key point that came up in discussion in, in the comments that I, I'll repeat for those who are on the call that haven't been participating in those discussions is, um, so before AFJ slash Credo 050 is released, um, there is actually not a version, a released version of that framework that supports did peer two or four. Um, so even though Akapai is gaining the ability to do interop with Credo 050, uh, it unfortunately does not get us interop with AFJ less than that version. Um, I might end up picking up a uh, DidPeer1 implementation support inside of Akapai in order to achieve that. Um, I might not. So um, we might just stick with DidPeer4 and then just look forward to interop with the new versions as we go forward. So. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we still have this issue with the back channel controller for did exchange and out of band and resteading um, AFJ in the way that Akapai does. So that's still got to be looked at. Um, not sure where that's going to go. Okay. Steven? Yeah. I uh, just want to mention that I've started looking at the, expanding the, oh, okay. the AFJ uh, back channel for uh, did exchange oh, and out of band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the thing, the thing that's uh, going to be merged today to support that. I never worked on uh, the JavaScript back channel before, and I didn't want a, a development environment for AFJ on my local machine. So what's coming for Aries Agent Test Harness is a set of dev development containers. Um, for ah. every back channel and for Aries agent test harness. So anybody who wants to get involved in the future, no matter if it's back channel development or test development, will not need to know how to configure a development and de debug environment for these things. So just load the dev container and start up uh, developing with the back channels or awesome. the tests themselves. So <laughs> that should be done today. And then I'm going to continue with um, uh, expanding that AFJ uh, back channel. Excellent. Oh, okay. That's good to hear. Thanks, Sheldon. Wade? No problem. Get off mute first. I just wanted to add to what Sheldon was saying. So the way that he's done it is you can actually pick the dev container when you start the project. So depending on what component you're um, developing, you can pick the, the associated dev container with it. Um, it might be a pattern that's cleaner um, to use in something like the Akapai plugin repository rather than having dev containers buried in each of the in each of the subdirectories or plugins. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> okay, load generator testing. Um, 
we've been doing low generator testing at BC Gov, um, getting really good results. So <clears throat> we, um, Lucas uh, O'Neill, who I believe is on the call, updated the, um, created a new script that allowed for us to um, do um, load generator testing, not just directly to an Akapai agent, but to a controller, um, to a controller that is um, in itself controlling uh, an Akapai agent. So stepping back and, and this allows us to do end-to-end um, -end testing um, of, of of the entire process. So not just um, the act by part, but the actual um, business logic uh, controller software for um, an issuer. Um, latest tests we ran yesterday, which probably makes us um, good enough is we're getting um, 300 and 310 credentials issued per minute um, in a sustained load with no errors happening. So, um, and that's going to be good enough for what we need to do. So we're going to look at possibly doing some other testing, which might in uh, involve both issuing and verifying in the same test sequence. Um, but uh, 310 credentials per minute, um, so about five a second, is good enough for what we needed to do. Um, that does include um, a mediator, business logic, um, an Akapai instance, obviously an Akapai database, and all configured in exactly the same way our production environment works. So it's a pre-prod environment we used. So I don't know if anyone has any questions on that, but we were super happy with that um, and it meets um, the needs we have. I'll type this and if anyone wants to say anything. All right. Uh, just one quick comment. It might be worth, I think we've talked about this, but um, all the changes are just kind of off to the side. Um, we might want to see how we want to generalize it to put it into the Akrita framework, but I don't know yeah. if this is a really specific use case using the like URL controller style that items set up and the pre-made invitation, or if it's yeah. something that would be useful for other cases as like a generalized case into the framework. Um, I think there's a few things we could do um, that would make it more aligned. So a little easier, but I, I get what you're saying. Um, there's definitely like the actual script um, is probably not needed. It would be interesting to see another plugin in the Akrita platform as an example. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it. Um, yeah, the changes are are fairly minor. Um, Lucas did a, a good job at nailing down. Here's what we needed to do to uh, to enable it. So, work nicely. Very pleased with it. And then I've been running. Um, it on a couple of spare Unix boxes that I had hanging around and, and just executing those, um, which also worked nicely. We didn't have to get into the whole um, creating a, a cloud environment and so on, because we we definitely wanted to test our own production environment, which is involves the BC data center and uh, BC Gov data center and so on. Okay, um, DRPC support is almost done. We're waiting on a, um, a an approval that from Ian that um, uh, that acknowledges that Akif did some documentation and hopefully a, enough documentation. Um, but we otherwise, um, Akif, you want to go ahead? We just need some documentation. Yeah, yeah. there is some uh, now. Yeah, if you check the PR, um, I've updated the description, but I've added a, I've up, updated the README. I've added a mermaid diagram or a couple to show like what the flow is like. So please take a look and I will add more documentation, uh, maybe outlining the structure of the objects and things like that, and maybe linking a type diagram. But at least for now, that should cover 
how DRPC works, the endpoints that are available, what they do, um, and how the flows should work between two agents. So, excellent. Uh, implementation's done. Uh, I think it has sufficient test coverage. It's got integration tests. Uh, I've tested it with um, Intraction, which is seems to be working. So it integrates into Akapai quite well, I think. I haven't had any issues so far. Um, and I'll be working on probably putting together uh, just a small demonstration to show how it works between two controllers. And then I'll add that into the, the repo as well, maybe as a follow-up PR. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then from our perspective, if we turn that over, it will be um, added to the environment that BC Gov runs called Traction um, in the dev environment. So a plugin added to it and, and that will be turned over to be used in an initial use case, which is as mentioned previously, app attestation. Okay, and the last one we want to talk about was um, one that Ian's been working on, Akapai issue 2000, which is a race condition. So it felt worthwhile to, since it is, um, it's talked about in the context of issue credential 1.0, but what Ian found was it's a more general problem. And, um, and, and so, Ian, you want to go over it and how it affects all protocols and then what he's proposing to do about it? Yeah, so the problem is that um, in base record, which is the kind of the low level record that all of the wallet records use, um, when the record is saved, it, it emits an event which triggers a webhook. Um, but this happens kind of during the process as the records are being saved and the commit, if, it, if it's a transactional database, then the commit happens later on. So what the, 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 the people who opened this bug found was that when they were doing load testing, they were getting about 1% of their issue credentials failing. When they called the webhook, they were getting an error that the, rec the, the credential exchange was in the wrong state. So what we, figured was happening was that the webhook was getting issued and then because they were running a load test, um, they were actually calling the webhook before the transaction was committed. So then when the webhook was called, it was getting the wrong version of the record from the database. It was getting the, the committed version as opposed to the version that triggered the webhook. Um, so Stephen, if you want to just scroll down to the bottom, there's a, a PR that I've linked there. Yeah. So if you link to the PR and then go to the files changed, set tab um, and then scroll down to the base record. So the, the, the record, the, the, the line that's changed in the base record is you can see there's a session profile notify, which is what does the, emits the event that triggers the webhook. And I've changed that. I, I put a, a method in the session itself called emit event, which um, rather than emitting the event right away, it stores it in an internal queue. And then when the after the transaction is emit committed, then it, it emits all the events. So what this should do is emit the webhooks after the database transaction is committed. Um, so anyway, I've, I've, I've updated the code. I've, I've done all the testing. It doesn't break anything, but what I'm trying to do right now is just um, replicate the problem just to confirm that this actually fixes the problem. So that's the, the challenge I'm having right now. Anyway, so the, the PR is there if anyone's interested in taking a look at it, but I'm, I'm gonna spend a bit of time still trying to do some testing and just make sure that this is actually fixing a problem as opposed to just being a change. Yeah. yeah and it, it, for, to Daniel's comment, I, I was surprised actually uh, how minimal the changes were. Um, one of the reasons I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> about it and it's it's not it's not affecting like every single notify only the ones that are related to the um these record changes so that's it okay any any other comments um from those deep in the code We are in an active transaction. Cue the event, otherwise emit it. All right. 
Queuing scares me. Should I be scared about that? Yeah. Patrick? Um, might be a, a dumb question, but does Akapai have a built-in queuing system or does require like a Redis plugin to be set up for this to work? It's just an internal array. It's not, it's not really a queue. And I think okay. in, the, in this case, I think a queue would be overkill because yeah, if, that's... If, if the application crashes, then the transaction is going to roll back anyway. And right. so, so the, the, okay. the, the commit, if, if the transaction gets committed, it'll emit all the events. So if the transaction gets rolled back, it'll discard them. So that the, the, the events won't get emitted. The webhooks won't get called if the transaction rolls back. Okay. So I think, I, so I, I think this is all we need. I don't think we need anything more complicated than this. Okay. Okay, good. That that was what came to mind for me. So thank you for <laughs> alleviating my concerns. And I'll go back to writing documentation. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, uh, release 1.0. I've got a checklist issue um, that I've created. Um, I flagged PRs and I flagged issues um, for with the label 1.0. So these are the flags and issues that are are done. Um, this one I we will be able to mark as we're not going to do this. So um, what I asked Andrew to do. So this 587 encryption envelope support is DIDCOM v2 um, encryption envelope support. And Andrew did a brief assessment and said, until we actually do DIDCOM v2, doing this makes no sense. So um, this will come off the list as we're not going to do this yet. Um, and we will do this when, um, when we do DIDCOM v2. So this one will come off the list and I will update the supported RFCs to say, we're not gonna support this yet. We still support A AIP2. Um, this is the one we just talked about. Um, this is Daniel's um, did exchange did peer related fixes. Um, a couple of others, partial revert of connection re record schema change. Um, this is the issue related to Credo did exchange v1. Um, making the emission of different did, pit, did, did peers um, tenant specific is a trivial change based on what I've evaluated and I expect to, I'll, I'll probably just do this one in the next little while. Um, reorganize the documentation of the files. Um, I am doing this as we speak, there is a PR that I'm preparing. Um, so I've claimed this issue and I'm working on it and we'll have that um, probably by end of day, have it completed. I got most of it done yesterday. Um, a couple of small things that I thought were, were important. Um, Per tenant setting of preserve exchange records per sending requests through public did. Um, this one should be easy enough to do again, um, as you know, as this one is. Um, I this is the one, this is the issue that Ian just talked about. So that's being completed. Um it's oh, this is another tenant level, sorry, per tenant setting. So again, uh, I put a few, uh, put the per tenant setting ones in there. Um, that is the total amount of things I see for for um, 1.0. Any other issues, Patrick? Uh, I just wanted to touch on the PyLD uh, yeah. sort of bug we're okay. working on. So what I would like to do is once they release a package, just a PyLD version upgrade, uh, simple as that. Um, uh, it seems okay. like they are on it and they will release a patch. Uh, okay. So that's just a note I would uh, would want to include there. I had a PR open with like an alternative fix. Uh, 
So yeah, I don't really want to go down that route, but it seems like we'll be able to get a release on the ILD package. Okay. Uh, Sean? Yeah, um, I missed the last couple of Acapug meetings. Apologies. Um, the Linux uh, Hyperledger Foundation staff would definitely want to support uh, the 1.0 release and get the word out. Um, yeah. Do you have some timing? Um, I'm, I'm sort of looking at this and saying, you know, can we do this by two weeks or or the end of the month? Cool. All right. Let me let me talk to some folks internally. Yeah. I mean, based on that technical work, I think it's fairly low. Um, this is probably the biggest one. Um, and I I probably didn't do enough preparation for for that, uh, for this part of the discussion, but that's what we we do need to do is is look at LTS and long-term support as to what we want to be able to say. Um, Thanks. These are just quick PRs. Um, updated the, uh, this one is now already done. This was the last thing on the not completed and we're now saying not completed and not going to do, and that's okay. Um, update AIP2. Um, which I hope to do today as a, a PR to the Aries RFC. And then this is where what you're talking about, blog post, press release, and so on, to get the word out that 1.0 has been accomplished. And it's long overdue. Um, I will... Um, is there for the maintainers is there anything else you see in here that needs to be done and anything other than that in the you know i think that covers almost all of the pull requests that are there um so the um, one thing that i sorry the, the one thing that stands out to me as being notably absent for a 1.0 release is uh the anon creds updates like uh, the the non creds RS and getting those integrated, um, yeah. Which I I'm not I don't feel strongly one way or the other. I think right now, but I, I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. I guess. Yeah. My thoughts are uh, I got to the point that said, um, it it's it's just another thing along the path. It's not in the in the massive. Um, you know, if we talked about going to 1.0 a year ago, we wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been the thing that would be on a required list. And that's where I started thinking about it, that it really doesn't need to be on a required list. It would be really good to have it done as soon as possible. I really want to get it done and out there so that we can, you know, deprecate the other things and 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 move on to a non-creds RS only. Um, but I don't think it needs to hold up 1.0. That was my thought. That's fair. Um, I think it's also, and I, I think you'd probably agree with this, but I think it's arguable that Akapai has already essentially been in a near 1.0 state for a long time. So it, it makes sense to just make it official and then we can continue to move forward. And and when the non-creds RS stuff is ready, it'll it'll get in at that point, I guess. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, part of part of that was, was exactly that thinking of, we always seem to say, well, let's get this done first. And then that takes a long time and we forget about actually changing the release to 1.0. And I think that's what I'm trying to avoid is let's let's just set a reasonable target because it's, you know, it's long overdue. Okay. All right, with that, um, I'm not going to go into the long-term support because, um, Jamie, are you good to talk about plugins? Yes. Excellent. Um, I just, yeah, a quick update on the, the non-creds endorsement stuff. I, I was just working through the, there was a few integration tests that 
weren't running with the non-creds um and they kind of do like they do everything manually so they don't set um the author role and stuff so those weren't actually getting uh i wasn't testing stuff like doing every transaction manually um so i think i'll be done today but i'm not exactly sure if we want to support all that in a non-creds and we're gonna have to do change the integration test but i think i'll get them supported now okay. and then we can decide whether to take that stuff out or not because it does add a lot of complexity and um anyway okay let's have a chat about that jamie um i'll uh, i do want to hear more and understand a little bit more of what you're saying there so okay um yeah i'll just quickly go over some of the stuff with plugins then yeah so just to introduce this section um we now have a plugins repo um we talked about it a fair amount previously and i just wanted to give jamie a, a chance to show what is the state that the plugins repo is in um how you know and, and just an overview of it so with that i turn it over to jamie yeah so we have a few plugins now some are super basic like uh basic message storage just saves saves messages between agents in in the wallet database um but there's more advanced ones like redis events and kafka events um i can't speak a lot on this one right now but i think this one's a little bit more in work in progress but all of them have um integration test folder all of them have unit testing um and then recently um akif did a plugin for the rpc stuff um out of this repo using um using the script so there's this repo manager script and you can a new developer can use it to create a new plugin so you just have a couple options now but you can create a new plugin put the name here and then it will install like all the scaffolding for integration tests your dev container which we're really pushing for um it'll give you a base uh, configuration file um so it does the same type of format as a as a protocol in Akapai. So Akif was the first one to actually use this. There was a couple of hiccups, but it worked decently well. So after you do this, you can just open your dev, dev container and open this and you'll have a full, you'll have all your integration tests, all your scaffolding set, set up, all your linting stuff set up. And then you just have to start adding like a routes file or whatever you want based on what you're trying to do. So um, yeah, works. We want to start pushing plugins to be built this way. I think it will work pretty good. And then one of the other things um, going on is there's this globals file, which has the scaffolding in it. And then it has its own, um, it has its own uh, configuration file here. So if you want to change stuff for every plugin, you can change any of these configurations and it will merge them with, um, with the plugin. So if you want to uh, like have different, um, uh, different libraries, you can add them here and they won't get overridden. But if you have a common dependency, then it will take it from the globals file. So it's just a way that we want we want to keep everything on the same versions in upgrading. We don't want plugins to get left behind. You can still update one at a time, but if you use the script, it will update all of them. So use the same script and then you do update all plugins. And then this is merging them and then it 
will delete each lock file and upgrade them. So this is a way that you can upgrade all the plugins at once. And then when you push it, it will run all the integration and unit tests. And if something's broken, you can hopefully fix it easily. But um, yeah, so this is the way we're gonna try to manage this as it keeps growing and keeps adding more and more plugins to it. Um, that was basically all I wanted to show. But um, yeah, it was kind of cool to see somebody actually use it from scratch, like Akif did recently. And I think it went pretty well. I agree. Um, Patrick? Just a quick question. So on the OIDC for VC plugin, uh, from what I understand, there was like a new endpoint that you could set with new routes. Is that a complicated thing to do? I don't know if it's really here is the place we should talk about this, but when you talk about these routes, so these routes would be added to the admin interface, as I understand. Uh, so and one one that does that, a whole bunch of these do that that actually. So one is like basic message storage. So without any of the scaffolding, you'd be kind of in this state and this file would be empty. But then all you do is add the routes file and all these routes will, if you use the plugin, they get loaded into the admin inter interface. Um, I can't speak and, on how Akapai does that, but it loads all the routes from each plugin that he uses. And in an instance where I would want like when you run this plugin with Akapai to have a new endpoint that I set, you know, let's say I want to have an endpoint that I want to be publicly accessible uh, and wouldn't want that to be on the admin interface. Um, is that fairly straightforward? Oh. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I haven't actually done that, so I can't speak to how you do that right now. Okay, thank you. Traction has public endpoints in the innkeeper plugin, right? Like you make a reservation. Um, but now that I'm talking that through, I think they're in the admin interface. And the only reason they're public is because they go through our proxy. So you'd still need the X API key if you weren't doing that traction setup. Maybe we can add a decorator or something hmm. to indicate something's public. Well, no, because there's public endpoints in the admin Akapai API, right? Like ready and live. So, yeah, I'm sure you could do something, but I'm not sure right now. <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's put together a, doc, a design doc or something. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, yeah, comment that it was really easy to develop the plugin. I mean, mind you, I don't think the protocol I was working on was that difficult, but uh, just in case, like Pat, if you're looking for like other, uh examples rpc also has examples of how to register like endpoints it's not public but at least it's an it's a now another example of how um we're using the plugins to like integrate new protocols into akapai so yeah i think it's a new example actually of how to implement a protocol as a plugin as opposed to it being a core part of akapai so it's another example that we can Include and I think the Akapai documentation has uh, a section on creating a plugin and how to register routes and message handling in that README. I think so. Okay, thank you. Yep. Lucas? Yeah, I think. Oh. Sorry, do you want to finish, Jamie? Anything? No, I was just I was just gonna say that I. Like, think this is really important going forward with Akapai in general, because otherwise, if we didn't have this and we wanted them to be supported well, they'd either be scattered in other repos or all in the Akapai repo, and it would just be yeah. getting out of control. So that's the main reason why we're trying to do this. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. I was just wondering quick about the um in the like the Pi project file uh for the uh, the like Aries Cloud Agent Python libraries. Um the version pinning is like greater than 
O ten less than one, right? Um, yeah, that's. I think that's what they are. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, unless I'm mistaking how that version is working, that means like if I'm pulling in a plugin, like we're doing a traction or anyone could be doing, and there's like Akify O twelve O, Pi or PyPy libraries get published, right? Like your app could build with an updated Akify that could have breaking changes without knowing, without like you having updated that yourself, right? Just by including the plugin. Is that right? Like, like if Aries thir Aries Cloud Agent 013 live, 0013 libraries came out and I just built once they went live, this would build those new ones, right? Maybe that's not a problem because the plugin should be supporting that, but the way the way that the the way that it's been defined the dependency on aries cloud agent is it's a an optional dependency mm -hmm. so if you're pulling the plugin into some other project it's not going to impact the um the version of akapai that's installed it won't even try to install it um the reason why we did it is an extra dependency so when you're developing the plugin itself, if you install it with its dependencies, it will it will automatically install uh, Aries uh, Akapai. And mm -hmm. basically, what we've defined is is we've defined it as being you know it'll install between um, the between the two versions that are specified there. So it's it's only if you install the the optional dependencies that it will that it'll do that. And then basically it'll just work like any other um, version. So if okay. Akapai is in installs, it, it'll install the newest version up to uh, version one. That okay. is something that needs to be that we have a ticket for, well, kind of have a ticket for, but like currently you only know that these plugins are for sure working like on the versions of the lock file. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice to, be able to know like if I have an old version of Akapai um, and I'm not using the optional that it's that the plugin's going to work and uh, there's definitely some work to be done in in that respect I think right. that's what this one is and there's a bit of a conversation but it hasn't really mm -hmm. gone anywhere <laughs> but um, yeah anyway that's a hard problem to solve. So if anybody has any ideas, there's this ticket here. Yeah. I guess that's kind of what my um, comment was related to, which is you mentioned the auto upgrading of all the the lock files, the, uh, the pi project, and then the lock files. If, if you get to a point where all of the plugins, but you know, one of them and not the one you are interested in or know about. Um, you could, in theory, um, back off the changes in that particular plugin and then merge the rest of them, right? And leave that one behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right now, the if you use that script, it, it uh, won't work. Like it will upgrade all of them, but you could you could take the changes for the plugin that doesn't work, like the integration tests don't work or whatever, and yeah. not commit that one. But it's not yeah. exactly streamlined or anything. Yeah, you just would undo it. But the the what that gets to is this whole idea, and I, I'm sure it's coming in with this tagging of this repo question, which is that eventually some plugins will not get maintained by their maintainers. Um, and and that's going to be the biggest um, risk. And, and being able to know exactly the state, like it, it might be nice to have a part of that managed script to say update on, okay, here are the, here is the status of all of, all of the repos. Like how do they compare to the global um, plug in that might be a nice way to be able to automate the 
publishing of information to say, here's where the various plugins are and here's what's needed. Um, yeah, so I that agree. Everyone starts to fall behind. I'm just wondering if that managed script could be extended to do something like that. I think it could, but um, yeah. I think that's a good idea. All right. Any other questions or comments for Jamie? This is awesome work, Jamie. Thank you. And thanks for presenting it. No problem. Um, yeah, I didn't know about this meeting. I, I, it was the... Sorry about that. <laughs> that's okay. Um, you, I, I'm assume there is documentation about all of the things you talked about, but I think they, well, I'll stop there. Is there? <laughs> There's some, yeah. Um, in the readme file, but um, okay. there's only a little bit, so. All right. Um, well, one thing I can do is I'll extract out um, your section of the uh, the, you know, that first bit of intro and we'll put a link in, we'll put it on, on the, in the Hyperledger YouTube channel and then, um, add it to the, the readme, um, a key documentation seems to be, um, what you're talking about today. So, uh, but anything you can add that cleans up this based on your experience would be good. And anyone who does a new plugin that goes through this and finds things that were, um, uh, less clear, um, please update the documentation on this. This is a community, definitely a community repo, and we need um, we need the community co uh, contributing to it. It might be worthwhile to to yeah add a link to that Akapai documentation about how to register routes and stuff like that. At least from here, if not copied over. Okay. Excellent. All right. Any uh, anything? Any other topics people want to raise before we end it in the call? No hands up. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. See you Steve. in a couple of weeks. Everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.